This old highway's getting longer. If I ask a question that's really awkward, we'll just use the safe word gritty. Just say gritty, and then I'll just move on. We'll use hey, quagmire. Well, while, quagmire. He's, <laughs> while he's talking, can I be going gritty? gritty. <laughs> the whole time. <laughs> the whole time. Like, we're in trouble. Tomorrow night. Nice. Yeah. It's embarrassing. I hope he ain't wearing them skinny jeans. Hey, is he wearing them skinny jeans? Hey, was Luke You're wearing them skinny me. jeans? Past two weeks, no one's been home. And we need to do something about that. Yeah. You know, the, the studies show that if the dad of the family hunts, it's 50 50 if the kids are going to. Um, but if the mom hunts, the kids are going to hunt. And the wide line's getting longer. And the but just be positive in your life. Every, every crowd I'm looking at right there, there's somebody there who is a natural leader. Yeah. Are they going to be a positive leader or a negative leader? <laughs> on the table. Dude, All right. A- a- nice. Avon sold it. <laughs> On this episode of Gritty Bowman, Aaron Snyder and myself visit with our friend David Brinker of Sitka Gear. We recorded this podcast at the ATA show more than six months ago in January of this year. This is a podcast you should watch if you have time. You will never see a more uncomfortable and awkward Aaron Snyder in your life, which is well worth watching. But the best part of this podcast is watching Brinker bust out songs on his guitar in the middle of the ATA show at the Mountain Ops booth for all to see. And David shares a song he wrote himself, and I love the song. I love the song for many reasons, and some of these reasons are pretty well summed up by these quotes. The music I listen to will tell more about me than my mouth ever could. And if anyone tells you a song is important to them, you should turn it up, close your eyes, and really listen, because in the end, you will know that person much better. Music has a great power for bringing people together. With so many forces in this world acting to drive wedges between people, it's important to preserve those things that help us experience our common humanity. I could not help but notice how Brinker's talents brought disparate people together, blurring boundaries between competing brands and companies. And I learned more about David by listening to his song than I ever could in a one-hour conversation on a podcast. The next time you're outside watching the sunrise, I hope you don't take for granted how splendid it really is. Uh, that's right. <laughs> how does he know this? Just like, oh, I'll play that one. This is ridiculous. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you got to try it, man. Like, that's not a song I sing alone. Which one do you... I the can, rule. Dude, I can't sing for shit. It's bad. <laughs> dude, it doesn't matter. <laughs> dude, you've never heard of Much Too Young to Be This Old? <laughs> By oh. David Brinker? Oh, Lord, that's pretty funny. <laughs> All right, folks. Welcome to the Gritty Bowen Podcast. I'm here with Garth Brooks and Aaron <laughs> Snyder. <laughs> oh, Lord. Actually... Uh, it's actually Aaron Snyder and Garth Brooks in the right oh, order. I should have done it like that, yeah. <laughs> uh, David Brinker. <laughs> From Sitka, who apparently yes, is quite talented on the guitar and with the voice. I don't know about that. So we're gonna we're gonna get a little we're gonna get a little Garth Brooks going here. He's so <laughs> talented. They brought me in to step him down. Yeah, a level. So or talented. Two. We have n- there's not one person watching. <laughs> but that's better that way. They right? will later. All right. To let's do this. I want to hear it. All right. So I I think we're doing. What are we doing, Aaron? Garth Brooks, Garth. much that's, too young. That's been the request, huh? Much yeah. too well, young. I think this is Garth's first song, first hit. All right, you ready, Aaron? As ready as I'm going to be. Don't be be nervous, man. I'm nervous. This is less pressure than shooting at a big elk. (laughs) Your voice warmed up? I mean, you're feeling good? (laughs) La, 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 Do a buzzy lip drill? (laughs) Yeah, I'm good. How did you learn how to do this? Because we're like, we just say a song and you can start playing it on the guitar. Yeah, I I don't know. A lot of time in my bedroom when I was younger listening to the radio and trying to figure out how to play them. So you, you didn't like... Learn all the notes and stuff. You just kind of figured it out. Like I saw. So. I was self-taught. Yeah, hey, you're one of those people that piss me off. <laughs> you, uh, do you play uh, hunting camp? Will you bust a rhyme around the uh, yeah, campfire? Absolutely. From time to time? I, I, I never. I travel a lot with Sitka, which is my main job. Yeah. And uh, I never go anywhere without my guitar. So, nice. Hunt, hunting anywhere. It's kind of a pain in the butt, but it's nice to have <laughs> around, especially when people invite you to do podcasts. That's right. In the middle of the show. <laughs> well, they. <laughs> Let's do it, Garth. <laughs> All right, you ready? Uh, All right. I'm ready as I'm going to be. Uh, 
This old highway's getting longer It seems there ain't no end in sight To sleep would be best But I just can't afford to rest I gotta ride in Denver tomorrow night Nice <laughs> Yeah I called the house but no one answered for the last two weeks, no one's been home. I guess she's through with me. To tell the truth, I just can't see what's kept the woman holding on this long. And the white line's getting longer, and the saddle's getting cold. I'm much too young to feel this damn old. All the cards are on the table, but no ace left in the hole. I'm much too young to feel this damn old. All right. I don't know if I remember the rest of the words. <laughs> um, um, let's not go. All right, here we go. We're okay. going back to the chorus. Okay. And the white line's getting longer, and the saddle's getting cold. I'm much too young to feel this damn old. All the cards are on the table, <laughs> but no waste left in the hole. I'm much too young to feel this damn old. Lord, I'm much too young to feel this damn old. Dude, All right. a a nice. sold it. <laughs> oh, we should do one more. All right. What do you got? Uh, Whoa. Yeah, I mean, he's yeah. really <laughs> taking over the stage here. No, I... <laughs> This I, is the side uh, of Aaron I've never seen I know. Before. He's like, well, uh, can I get a light, a fog machine, please? <laughs> well, what I'm thinking is it sounds better with the earphones on, so we better knock it out now. <laughs> if I take these off and I have to hear myself, I'm like, never again. All right, what do you want? What's your, uh, what's, uh, do you know um, Fireman? No. They call me the Fireman. George That's Drake? my name? Yeah, okay. Well, you pick one, and I'll do my best. Oh, man. All right. You know Chicken Fry? Yeah, I well, so, well, okay, pick another one because I only know about <laughs> half that. Well, you know the chorus, right? I'm chicken fried. Cold we'll, beer on a Yeah, there you go. All right, we're, we'll do we'll do the first verse and the chorus of that one. That's okay. a good one, all right? Well, I was raised underneath the shade of a Georgia pine, and that's home, you know. Sweet tea picking pine, homemade wine, where the peaches grow. In my house, it's not much to talk about. But it's filled with love, it's grown as southern ground. And a little bit of chicken fry. Cold beer on a Friday night. A pair of jeans that fit just right. And the radio up. up. I like to see the sun rise. See the love in a woman's eyes. Feel the touch of my precious child. And know a mother's love. Whoa, whoa. Hit it, Aaron. <laughs> I, I can't do it unless you're singing. Oh, I can't do it. Uh, that's good as it gets. All Let's right. try one more. All right, what do you want? I don't know that You like Garth Brooks, well. right? I'm a Garth Brooks. Blame guy. it all on my roots. I, I showed, showed up in boots and ruined your black tie affair. affair. The, the last one to know. know. The last one to show I was the last one you thought you'd see there. I saw the surprise and the fear in his eyes when I took his glass of champagne. I toasted you, said, honey, we may be through, but you'll never hear me complain. I got friends in low places where the whiskey drowns and the beer. Chases my blues away, but I'll be okay. I'm not big on social graces, think I'll slip on down to the oasis. So I've got friends in low places. All right, nice job. Yeah, that's about as much as I can handle. <laughs> High five. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. Thank you.
Well, this isn't a cover anymore. This is this not is, a cover, and this is a hunting song. Did so. you, uh, it's, it's all you? I wrote this, yeah. Oh, awesome. It's called Something About a Sunrise. He said, hey, bud, wake up. I was shotgun in his truck, holding his old 7 mag in my first buck tag. Off to the east, it was burning red. He took a sip from his mug, and he said, there's something about a sunrise warming up a blue sky. It's shining through the trees, bouncing off the leaves that'll clear up your mind. There's no other peace like up here at daylight. I don't know what it is. The longer I live, the more that I find. There's something about a sunrise. He went on and on as we sat there. I can still see his breath in that mountain air and that crooked grin on his face. Yeah, that was his happy place. And that's one of those moments you don't forget. I'll never, ever forget the words he said. There's something about a sunrise warming up a blue sky. Shining through the trees, bouncing off the leaves that'll clear up your mind. There's no other peace like up here at daylight. I don't know what it is the longer I live, the more that I find. There's something about a sunrise. That's when I was 12, just like you, way back in 92. And son, your granddad would be so proud if he could see us here now. Well, you know he's smiling down. There's something about a sunrise Warming up a blue sky Shining through the trees Bouncing off the peaks That'll clear up your mind There's no other peace like Up here at daylight I don't know what it is The longer I live The more that I find There's something about a sunrise Something about a sunrise Something about a sunrise That's awesome. That was awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Respect, man. Well done. Thank you. That was that was cool, man. Thank you. So look, you do that all around the uh, campfire and the, the whole deal? Yeah. Play around town, starting to play several other places, and just kind of, it's, it's a hobby turning into part of my life. Yeah. A bigger part of my life, yeah. yeah. You told me he could sing. You told me he could play the guitar. Dale, I was like. Dale Pearson is <laughs> the one that told me. Yeah, Dale Pearson, uh, uh, Sitka guy. Yeah. Um, he told me you could sing. He just posted on Facebook. He said, dude, you better bring your A game. I've heard you sing. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Dale. Gosh. Oh, Lord. No, it's, it's a lot of fun. A lot of fun. It's a good way to release energy. Yeah. So um, you're with Sitka. I am. Uh, tell us about that. Like, um, how did you uh, get started there? So, and how long has it been? Yeah, so been I've with been Sitka. with them for about nine years. Um, I, I was friends with one of the founders um, back in the day. We used to do a wild pig hunt every, in California mm-hmm. every year. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was uh, when I first met him, uh, it was the first year they had prototypes. They had just got the prototypes. They just got the business plan dialed in. And 
they were just going to go to market with it. And basically yeah. what happened is, is I uh, become friends with him and he hired me or they hired me while I was still in college, allowed me to finish college and tra- travel back and forth and yeah. live in uh, Napa, California, where the company was at the time and, and uh, ended up just going down there full time. But I actually turned down the job once. You guys, it, it, it was kind of a funny story. Really? Yeah, he called me one day. I, was, I used to be a, uh, a, a golf teacher. I was a prof- professional. No. Yeah. And, uh, Man of many No talents. doubt, like diverse <laughs> here. Yeah. Um, but he uh, called me one day. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was sick of working at golf courses, and and uh, he says, "Hey, we got a job for you down here at Sitka. We're just starting to pick up. We need our, our really our it was our se- second employee." And I said, uh, "Well, gosh, man, I'm still in college. I got like three terms left. I can't just pick up and move, you know. Yeah. So even though it's my dream job, I got to turn this down. Sorry." And uh, I put down the phone and I called my girlfriend, my now my wife, and I said, "You will not believe the job I just passed up. It's my dream job." Yeah. And she said, "Well, why didn't you ask him if he could do college credit?" And uh, I said, oh, my God, I'm such an idiot. And, That's uh, why we have wives. Yeah. <laughs> and I go, well, I can't call him back. He'll, he'll think I'm an idiot. And <laughs> I literally hung up the phone, and, and my phone rings and again. And he says, hey, what if we gave you uh, college credit? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, it's, you know. That's a cool story. The rest is history. And I've done a little bit of everything at the company. And now I'm currently, in the last five years, I've been um, marketing. So. Well, and I remember 07, 08, mm-hmm. I'd heard of Sitka. I was working. I just got divorced. I was poor, basically. And I'm I went still into, poor, by the way. Yeah. Just so you guys. Yeah, I went in. <laughs> yeah. Duly noted for all three. Of them. <laughs> uh, the whole industry. Yeah. Yeah. Why? Well, yeah, it's funny. I'm like, oh man, you must make so much money. I'm like, yeah. There's three people in the industry that make a lot of money. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I, I was in Bass Pro, yeah. and they had some of your stuff marked down. Yeah. It was a bit bigger at the time, so I, I literally, I'm like, looking at my account. I'm like, I'm not gonna make my truck payment. I mean, this is a true story, yeah. but you can defer a payment on your vehicle yeah. twice through the span of the. And so I deferred my truck payment, yeah. and I spent all that money on Mountain Mimicry stick. Oh, <laughs> so my priorities, dude. My priorities. Was like, Why is it a big deal? I was like, and I didn't know about anything with anything other than I'd been wearing mountaineering clothing hunting. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, this is like mountaineering clothing, but it's in a, a camo pattern. Right. Yeah. And, uh, and then we were talking about camo fire. Camo Fire was like, as a poor man, the place to get some Sitka at the end Absolutely. of the year. But you guys have expanded from, well, who, I'm sure you can't talk about the numbers, but pretty much taken over the industry. I mean, as far as numbers-wise, you guys have now done whitetail, duck hunting, um, obviously mountain hunting. You've got, start out with mountain mimicry. Yep. Then you have open country. Yep. Um, and then you have, is it elevated? Elevated too, yeah. And then. Uh, marsh. Marsh. Yep. So and now we have we just launched um, our waterfowl timber pattern, which is a flooded timber pattern for the guys down south out with flooded timber. Gotcha. So what would you say through that entire time? Because obviously, you you can guess what's going on in people's minds. Sure. What was the biggest minus gore buying you guys? Uh-huh. What what was like the biggest like <laughs> that was a smart decision? Like what would you say something that sticks out in your mind more than another, or maybe something you remember the most through the last nine years? Gosh, what do I remember the most? Like a milestone or yeah, some, um, some major. You know, I think just the realization that more than just sheep hunters can benefit from technical, technical gear. Yeah, yeah. you know, any every we're all you know we all have, uh, focus on different species or have different passions. I'm an elk guy. I'm a sheep guy. I'm a duck guy. But at the end of the day, we're all hunting for very similar reasons. Yeah, and it's just as important for me to kill my bull elk every year is is to a lot of guys in in, in Stuttgart, Arkansas to get their limited ducks every yeah. day. You know what I yeah. mean? So Yeah. But at the so and since it's that important to us, we we all have to have a system that's going to allow us to do what we love to do. Yeah. Um so I think kind of just wow, this is going A, wow, this works. Yeah. We're selling a lot of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and then B, who else can benefit from this same way of thinking? And yeah. yeah, like Aaron said, now we're sort of we're di- we're actually we're, we're worldwide. Um, we're hunting wide now. Mm-hmm. I mean, we're we focus down to three categories: waterfowl, um, big game, and uh, whitetail. But I, I remember when it first came out, and there were a lot of people going, "Why would I ever spend that much on a pair of pants? Why would I ever invest in this?" And uh, it reminds me of what we were saying earlier about Steve Jobs saying, you know. People don't know what they want until you tell them what they want. That's right. And, yep. and I think that was a big part of this is people didn't know 
that they could want Sitka or that it would be worth what people... Yeah, and it's funny because Jonathan Hart, um, one of the founders, was he's, he's obsessed with Apple. Yeah. And he, he, uh, Steve Jobs is obviously... A, 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 he's a huge fan of Steve Jobs. And that was, that was one of the things um, that we've always said, or he's always told me as, as my, one of my mentors in my job, he's, we try to do everything different. If we're going to do it, it better be the best and it better be different. Otherwise, why would you do it? Mm-hmm. And I think Steve Jobs was... That oh, guy. Same, same way. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I mean, gosh, if you'd have asked, uh, well, you know, the, the analogy of if you'd asked, uh, you know, 200 years ago someone if, how they wanted to get around better, they'd say a faster horse and a, you know, a better carriage or whatever. Yeah. Well, um, same type of thing. People just didn't know. But here you have an industry like the outdoor industry that was already advanced. Yeah. And it was just so funny. Now looking back, of course, hindsight, you know, but looking back that no one had really connected the dots. Wow. These people are actually doing the same activities for a different reason. Same activities. Why do they wear cotton? And then we have these mountain climbers over here that are wearing all this amazing technical. Well, and that's what was a big thing for me. because Coming from a tactical community and then mountain hunting, I was just wore like Mammut or Arcteryx. Yeah, yeah, right. And, uh, but what was, I mean, hunters being who they are or whatever, um, initially they're like, uh, why, why would I, they had a grain in their mind. Why would I pay, pay for that? And I'm like, What? That looks like about a three hundred dollar jacket. Why can you not have it in camo? It's, it was just like a block <laughs> in their mind. I'm like, you're wearing what you're talking about, not buying. And right. I'm like, that doesn't make any sense. And I mean, I come from a gear perspective. I was pretty jacked up on Mountain Dew about it because, you know, you buy from Patagonia, yeah. which I love Patago- Patagonia. Yeah, they're not exactly pro hunting, right. um, I would say. And you guys yeah. build equivalent for pr- pro hunting, basically, yeah. you know, obviously hunting company. Yeah. But I, there was a enormous craze. Like, I don't know how many of my friends were in trouble. Yeah. But they were selling stuff they shouldn't have been selling to, yeah. to buy the thick right. at the time. Right. It was comical. Well, it's also so funny about that it's in that same light is people shooting $1,000 bows, yeah. buying a new bow every year. Yeah. And then they go out wearing something that they're, that's going to not allow them to stay out all day. But and they they can't connect that you know they couldn't at least I think the industry has changed so much oh. you know Sitka is sort of I, I believe of course I work for Sitka but I believe we kind of started it mm-hmm. and now there's you know there's actually tons of competition out there which I also believe is healthy keeps us all on our toes and uh, uh. Um, and and it grows the the knowledge uh, the knowledge base and the consumer to to appreciate and value uh, yeah. technical gear I do have to say I was a bit overwhelmed there's a quite a few new camo companies yep. out this year holy yep. moly there was yeah. like seven new patterns in fact who did we sit by at dinner tree something when last which night? dinner because anyway, i'm like yeah. i'm running well, them all it, together we sat by the whole table and i'm like one i'm using my fingers and toes i'm like man there's like nine new camo companies out but it was yeah. pretty pretty amazing yeah that's crazy yeah yeah it's, it's amazing do you so what do you think um as far as like your big plan or whatever well you probably can't talk about it but as far as like is there anything maybe you guys would do different or something you're going to add to you can talk about i think we're like every day at our at our we're, we're, we're pushing the, ourselves and trying to trying to push the limits and try to get better all the time i mean i think we never really rest we're always working two three years ahead yeah. um mm-hmm. and yeah i mean we got we got some really really big things Probably the most significant things we've ever done coming up. We yeah. haven't even done them yet. So yeah. I, I, I think we've just really begun. And it's kind of funny because it, to me it seems like it, it's a lifetime. So, you know, yeah. nine years isn't that long, but in my life it is. And But really, like, the company is just scratching the surface. We haven't even started. Yeah. So You know, uh, one of the first, um, I, my first podcast that I did was with Aaron. Yeah. And I, it was titled, Why Do Kafaru Backpacks Cost So Freaking Much? And my question was, why? Why are they so dang expensive? Because it's just a backpack, mm-hmm. you know. And Aaron, through the course of that conversation, completely changed my way of thinking. Yeah. And well, in, a, in a way, it very much applies to the gear, the high-tech gear and clothing as well. It's, yeah. it's, the, it's that same thing. Like, I didn't uh, – value came with education and understanding. Mm-hmm. And, then, and then really until I used it, it didn't really solidify. Yeah. Like conceptually, I got it, but but until you really use it, mm-hmm. and I don't think like I wear your Sitka Timberline pants, yeah. and your cold front, which I've 
I haven't married your cold front jacket, right. but as much <laughs> as it pisses off some of the other camo companies I work with, yeah. your cold front jacket is in my pack a lot. Yeah. And I tried to explain to a guy recently, I'm like, look, until you've been at 13,000 feet in a drizzly rainstorm trying to count annual eye on a sheep, you probably aren't going to know what I'm talking about. So right. climb your ass up there, yeah. sit there with some cotton on, and then report back yeah. to me because then you'll know. Now, and that jacket's one of your higher-end yeah. jackets. But for me, I always looked at things like camera gear. I'm a, like you with the, you know, the guitar, right? Yeah. I really like photography. Well, I don't want to suck at it, so I'm going to save up money. That's my passion. Right. Well, I consider myself to be a semi-professional at hunting in the industry. Mm-hmm. Well, how many guys do you know that wear, you know, that are professional basketball players that have crappy shoes or right. professional race car drivers that yeah. drive daywoos? Trying to break that down to them, like, are you want to be the best you can be? Yeah. And I'm like, do you just drink beer with your friends at, for seven days and don't go out? Or do you actually get up and get after it? I get yeah. after it. And I'm like, okay, do you buy a new bow every year? Yeah, I buy a new bow every year. Do you drive, you know, a jacked up Dodge four-door diesel? Yeah. And I'm like... You're not getting what I'm saying then at all. You know, clothing is just, and it's, there's been a huge in the last four years. I would say the biggest in the last four years change in the fact that people get it now. And I don't see how you couldn't say you guys didn't start it because there was no one else. I mean, Russell tried, mm-hmm. but they, how to say it politely, they had a great idea with a bad right. execution. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we did. And it's the, the market keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And yeah. I think it's cool because I have. There's a lot of a lot of clothing companies that I like. Every year they come out with uh, better and better stuff. Mm-hmm. So we I, were at I'm, dinner with Kenton, yeah, at first light, and he's funny. You, you he likes Kenton, you, oh, Ryan God. Callahan. That's good to hear. Well, and he, they're funny because you know, obviously, <laughs> we talked a little bit about different stuff earlier. And Kenton's like, man, what was he? He goes, Sitka doesn't lie, and uh, somebody else. Anyway, we're talking to you. He's like. Because we had it privately tested, mm-hmm. and you guys came out better than what you said. You were about the only ones. And yeah. I don't know if Kitten was, he can get, he's a pretty damn funny mm-hmm. guy. And he's like, Sitka doesn't lie, but let me tell you. And he's going on and on about, you know, kind of how the industry works and numbers and everything else. Mm-hmm. And it is amazing. Marketing. That, and yeah, marketing. How You know, sales you know pitches. more than anyone. You put a lot of money into marketing to sure. let the word out. But I think at the end of the day, if you can, for me, for what I do, gear, I can just sit down and say, look, dude. Let's just break it down. I'll give you an example. Right. Try out my gear. Yeah. It's going to make your life easier yeah. in the in the back country, in yeah. the wilderness. And I think once they like the packs, once but they see that. I was telling somebody there. I mean, you can you can be a great marketer as a brand or an individual, but if you don't have a product that actually works, then actually your marketing is going to drive you in the ground. Yeah. yeah. Um, so honestly, like and and for those who know our, our 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 marketing which you know our content our advertising and stuff we we use real authentic shots from real trips we 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 shoot film of real trips we we're not we're not trying to fluff up really anything because i, I we believe the gear truly speaks for itself yeah um we just we're celebrating our tribe and the the group of amazing people we have using it that authentically love it the cold front jacket's an interesting one because a lot of the, or I shouldn't say a lot because there's not that many people that hunt sheep at 13,000 people. Yeah, Colorado. In the whole <laughs> scheme of things. But yeah. that jacket is a, uh, it's a perfect piece. And I think I saw the podcast, uh, I think I, I saw you talk about it once, but it's a perfect piece if you want, if you want a little insulation, but you also want the, the waterproofness. Yeah. All in one. You don't want to pack two jackets. You want the one jacket and, um, yeah. Uh, a, a good friend of mine in Bozeman does the same thing. I personally, yeah. I choose to carry two. Yeah. But, man, what a better way to save some weight. Well, and I get, I'm kind of a wiener, right? I get cold. I mean, I get cold, especially my hands. And Me so too. one of the things like uh, Washington, um, mm-hmm. I've been with the governor's tag holder a few times on yeah. Baker. And it's, <laughs> dude, it's horrible weather because yeah. it's 40 and raining all oh. the time. And so... Like, what I was having to do is I had to bring a couple systems because it would rain so much the jacket wouldn't leak, yeah. but it would get in here and get yeah. in the front of my chest wet. Not that yeah. the, the jacket didn't leak. And uh, we had a, a stove or whatever. And my buddies, when we went in, and I would not mention anything, but his jacket leaked like the Iraqi Navy. <laughs> but on the way in, he was telling me how stupid because that jacket's expensive. And uh, I'm like, well, dude, I don't know. It hasn't, it hasn't screwed up on me yet. And you have to know I like it because I don't, I'm not like a... Some guys are all Sitka or some guys are all First Light or whatever. Well, we got in there, and 
Dude, it was nice because it got to, like, snow, rain, sleet. I mean, and it was bad, and we were trying to glass, and, and it, it was pretty horrible. Well, what ended up happening in the case of the cold front, that the, the inner liner, it doesn't matter if it gets wet, it's still warm. Right. Um, well, his down jacket, because he brought two, it, it got wet. Ooh, bummer. And I'm like, and it wasn't any, it yeah. wasn't gear failure's fault, but it was just yeah. that crappy. Well, I was, like, looking at him, like, mm-hmm, I'm, I'm fine. He's like, shut up, dude. And I'm like, <laughs> I told you. I just, I have that yeah. much. I have a very firm belief in certain items, right? Yeah. Like, I don't like everything you guys make. Not that it's bad. It's just for what I do, sure. right? And you, as you mentioned, I have some pretty weird situations in Colorado. I mean, 13,000 feet right. for one. But I, those Timberline pants and that cold front jacket are important. Well, I think now at this point, that brown one, I think it's got 11 or 12 animals under it, dude, and it smells now. I mean, I because once I watered to the bottom of the jacket and forgot to put <laughs> some holes in the game bag, right, and it leaked, and I'm like, dude, that, it's it's lucky. It's just going with me. And I, so I'm, I'm a pretty firm believer in that specific piece of gear. And it is kind of odd because it's not something you would suggest to probably that many people for, you know. We, we, we sell a lot. I remember the first year we came out with the cold front, we – most most of our dealers told us we were crazy trying to sell, sell a six hundred dollar jacket. As far as like with the, uh, you know, Sitka or the different clothing in general, the one thing is uh, people do get a little bit confused from all the different companies on systems. Mm-hmm. That's one thing as far as your website has made it. I mean, if I could copy your website with the company that I run, it's just not possible. You have systems, mm-hmm. and that's yeah. a big big part of it. Helps people is when they get on there, they're not really flying around and i answer a lot of gear questions industry wide as far as like what do i need for this hunt it is nice from my and from a non-biased perspective of just hop on the site and that'll pretty much explain it and it it is handy huge huge priority for us i mean it it's it i i'm at the office every day and it seems like i learn something new about our gear every day yeah yeah i hear that all the time like i enjoy listening to mark uh, Uh kenyon on Uh on uh, wired Wired Hunt. yeah and um, he'll have his his segment where he talks about some engineering aspect yeah. of Sitka gear, which I like how he does that. Mm-hmm. Um, and you learn something, you, right. you learn something, and it's like, oh, I didn't I didn't know that. And uh, it also helps um, kind of explain how technical, how much work goes into yeah. these, how much thought and design goes into a piece of clothing. Yeah, no, it's. I mean, I can tell you it, from the from concept yeah. to a uh, jacket hitting a store is two to three years yeah, that's of cr- development. We we put a lot of time and effort and energy into resourcing our, our services, make sure our customers are taken care of. Um, if you have a, if you have an issue with our products, it's taken care of swiftly and and, yeah. and and rightfully. I will. I've destroyed some of your rain gear, not the rain guard's fault, but I have ins- I have no butt right, and I have huge quads. I am not good on crotches, so it was cool because rainy passed. Yeah, they had it to me in four days. Which yeah. I mean, it's good, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. I've I dealt with some other companies. And um, when I was doing more gear reviews, we mm-hmm. would test the, the warranty theory. Yeah. It can get ugly pretty quick because um, mm-hmm. there's some companies that would six months. Well, yeah. and, and if you're like a poor dude, if you can imagine, you know, and you spend money on a $200 set of pants or mm-hmm. 150 and they, you know, rip out. And let's say it's, it's just happenstance, but you still need them back. And then you get a... Well, we're we're back ordered for six months, or right. we're whatever. Yeah. That that really for poor dudes, he doesn't get to wear his new cool pants anymore. Yeah, where tough. and I've ripped. I've, I'm a cross ripper. I mean, I've ripped out some cross <laughs> different pants, and I've always gotten them back really quickly with you guys. So. Yeah, and the other thing that we, I mean, we have we have full time guys taking hundreds of calls a day during the peak season that are authentic hunters to 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 whatever tribe you associate with whether you're a waterfowl guy a sheep guy whatever right. we have someone you can talk to that can say okay you're going stone sheep hunting in bc here's exactly what you need why do i know that either i've done it or you know i've talked to hundreds of people or you know that right. are going to do it or have done it and that people really appreciate that i mean when you're spending two thousand dollars or when you're spending forty thousand dollars to do a stone sheep hunt you don't want to talk to somebody yeah know, Never uh, done it. Yeah, Doesn't exactly. Know. So, and you that's guys, pretty valuable for people. You're you're, you're investing. You you want to get some. Good you guys help. got a hell of a crew. Well, people, I've gotten crap recently because um, start taking more photos than hunting, going along trips because yeah. I really enjoy that. And I've killed enough stuff. I'm like, ah, it's not, it's not that big deal. But guys are like, oh yeah, you got the easy job. I'm like, 
you know, three, two camera bodies and three <laughs> lenses. And plus, you can't really screw up, right? No. You, you don't want to be the, the yeah. ding dong that blew out the animal. And for Steve, and I've messaged him a few times back and forth, just gear related questions. But it, Steven is always, and the Flosses have been very, they're very approachable at the shows, which is super cool because that's important as far as questions. And, mm-hmm. and they've, they do travel around quite a bit. And I know yeah. I have, I've only met uh, Kivawak. Kivyak. Kivyak. Yeah. yeah, he's killed more <laughs> than smallpox. He's <laughs> on it. I mean, he's a hunter. He's going to finish his uh, archery slam on sheep next month. Hopefully he's going desert hunting in Mexico. Yeah. So um, he's, he, the guy is unbelievable. Yeah, yep. I, yeah, I, I, I mean, he's just a predator. Looking from outside, looking in, I, yeah, he's, he definitely gets after. Yeah, it. he's legit. He he works harder than anybody I know physically, and so that's cool. Cool. Well, I want to thank you for coming on. I yeah, wanna, absolutely. I mean, that was that was great. I, talented. Thanks, yeah, buddy. Talented man. Appreciate yeah. Don't you forget about my singing, Aaron. <laughs> a. a. Ron. <laughs> Don't forget <laughs> about you know he wanted the fog machine and that's then right. right. could you guys like, can I, we do another more one? lights? Can we yeah, do can another we do one? Two David? more. All right. <laughs> Oh Lord! Give me the mic. Yeah, totally. <laughs> I got a, I got a, I got a clock like Flavor Flav hanging off my chest. <laughs> oh, cool. Yeah. Cool. Well, thank you, man. I appreciate thank it. It was you, nice guys. to meet you. Appreciate it. All right, stay All right. gritty. Okay, friends. If you're like me and you really enjoyed Brinker's song, "Something About a Sunrise," you can download the MP3 from the show notes of this podcast at grittybowman.com. The song is free. It's just about sharing a good hunting song and bringing people together. Do me a favor. Get on Facebook and Instagram and follow David Brinker Music. I love to see people pursue interests that fulfill them and change the lives of the people around them. David Brinker Music is one of those things. Give him a follow, and if you like his music and if you ever see David, stop by, shake his hand, and let him know what you think. Okay, Gritty friends, I hope you enjoyed that podcast. If you did, please take a moment to leave us a review on iTunes, Podbean, or Stitcher. We love reading your reviews. And connect with us on social media if you're on there. Look us up on Facebook and Instagram. And take a moment to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can receive notifications when we upload new videos. We've got a sweet deal with Mountain Ops. You get 20% off on all Mountain Ops supplements, combo packs, and apparel when you type in the word gritty at checkout. All right, friends, let me leave you with one other quote from Theodore Roosevelt who said, It behooves every man to remember that the work of the critic is of altogether secondary importance and that, in the end, progress is accomplished by the man who does things. We all have a choice. We can be people who do things or people who criticize the work of others. It's pretty simple, really. Get out there and do your thing. Good luck on your hunts and stay gritty. This is Ty Stubblefield, and you're listening to the Gritty Bowman. Gritty Bowman. <laughs>